This is uh, weeks 15 and 16 problems. This is question 14. Um, this problem is telling us we got a sample of 50 women who's obtained their heights uh, and their pulse rates are recorded. So uh, they're telling us that X is going to be the height. So that means Y is the pulse rate. So when we do a scatter plot, put those little points in the plane. Uh, this is the correlation coefficient. You think about it, heights and pulse rates shouldn't really have that much, in, you know, one shouldn't really be all that correlated with the other. Um, and that's what this is verifying. All right, uh, the .204 is showing us that that's closer to zero than it is to one. So that's showing that there's a little linear uh, correlation. And then this is the regression line here, right? They're telling us the average of those uh, 50 heights is 63.1. The average of the 50 pulse rates is 77.1. All right, find the best predicted pulse rate of a woman who is 70 inches tall. All right, use alpha as 0.05. All right, remember they're giving us this, the significance level, to find that cutoff, that cutoff for the value of r that will determine do we have enough linear correlation. Um, to use this line to predict the values of y. Remember, that's what the bull hat symbol means. It's predicted values of y. Are we going to use this line to predict the values of y, or is the best predicted value going to be the mean of the pulse rates? Okay, if x represents height, then what we're trying to predict is pulse rates. And if there is little linear correlation or no linear correlation, then we use uh, the average. All right. Remember, uh, the average is also called the expected value, and uh, that's our best guess for the population uh, average for women if uh, there is no linear correlation between height and women. So um, we got somebody who's 70 inches tall. If there was linear correlation, we would just plug it into that equation, and we would uh, get, and we would get 17. 0.5 plus 0 0.950 times x. They want x to be 70 inches. All right, that's 84. Now, we would say 84, but um, with a sample of 50, there's our two critical numbers. R is only 0 0.204. We're using alpha equals 0 0.05. So back to this. Alpha of 0 0.05 is this column. So with a sample of 50, R would have to be 0 0.279 or higher to consider that there's linear correlation there. And with 0 0.204 being lower, that means there's not linear correlation. So that means that this 84 is not our best guess. Our best guess is going to be the 77.1 beats per minute, the v uh, the mean of the y's, right? We uh, only use this line if there is linear correlation between the two. This is suggesting that there's not linear correlation. When there's not linear correlation, you use the mean of the y values, okay? All right, same thing in 15. I'm sorry, same thing in 16. Uh, except we have to come up with the numbers ourselves. So we're going to do a similar one. Um, when you have a data set, remember, what, like I said in class, as soon as you see a data set, it's going to go in your calculator. Right? This is a bivariate data set. We have X's and Y's. So I'm just going to plug in the data for the X's. And then over here, the data for the Y's. And now I have all my data in there. Once I have my data in there, remember stat. Go over to linear regression, option four. All right, and then enter. There's A and B. Remember, if your calculator doesn't show R, you got to remember to go to catalog. Turn on your diagnostics. and run the regression again, stat, linear regression, All right, and now R is displayed. All right, this R is ab above 
um, 0.9, that's that's a pretty strong indicator that we do have linear correlation. All right. They give us alpha 0.05. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 data points. So 0.707 is what we would compare it to. Again, when it's this high, we're usually going to be pretty confident with our estimations. Okay, linear uh, regression equation. The first number here is the B. It's the one that doesn't have the X with it, so 42.900. Uh, zero zero. All right, and then the X, the number in front of X here is the A, so it's 0.359 to three places. All right, so there's our regression equation. And what's the best predictive value? Since we have strong correlation here, we're going to use uh, the equation to come up with our prediction. All right, so uh, 85 feet is our height, our input. That's the x variable. So we're going to plug in 85 in here and then see what we get for the y. All right, 42.9. All right, the rest are zeros, so I can just leave them off. Uh, plus 0.359 times the 85 feet. 73.415. Uh, they want one decimal place, so just 73.4. Now I want to show you really quickly a way to uh, store this equation in your calculator. So uh, once we have our data in, all our data is in there and we run that linear regression all right out here to the side notice that it doesn't just automatically give it to us out here when we tell it to run it it's still got the cursor out here saying you know is there er other stuff that you want to do so I can put in more stuff here one of the things that we put in is if we want to graph it or store the line we can press the VARS button here variables and then scroll over to y vars alright so y vars and then function the very first option alright and then y1 these are all the different things if you were to press the y equals button you have all these different options in your y equals so I'm going to tell it to store this in y1 and then hit enter alright same thing that we got before but now notice that a is the number in front of x B is the constant term. Now when I press Y equals, it's loaded that equation into my Y equals button. Alright, so that is now uh, be ready to be graphed. Alright, now I've got my, uh, uh, my data in there. So what I'm going to do is above Y equals, right, right where we are now, above Y equals there's something called the stat plot. So I'm going to go into the stat plot, statistics plot, and right now they're all turned off. All right, I'm going to turn this one on. And notice that it says type here. The little dots, that's what we call a scatter plot. All right, that's that's what we're doing here, the linear regression stuff now. All right, there's a histogram. There's the uh, box plots we talked about uh, earlier in the semester. We want to do the uh, scatter plot. So notice that when I turned it on, when I hit on, plot one, uh, was highlighted so we're turning plot one on and now when I go back to y equals notice it says plot one on here all right last thing so you can see all your data and your line together don't just hit graph because if you hit graph you don't see anything okay uh, if everything's out of the picture but if we hit zoom and then come down to statistic zoom stat uh, now there's our scatter plot, and there's our line that fits it. Okay, now if you're in here, if you use this to to come up with your scatter plot, if you hit trace, it'll go through and give you your data that you put in. There's the first point we put in, second point we put in, so on and so on. All right, but if you press up or down, notice that you go from the actual data set, the scatter plot, to the line. All right, your regression line. Alright, and if you've highlighted your regression line and you're on your regression line, 
you can plug in numbers. So I could plug in 85 feet right there and it gives me that same 73.4. All right. If I wanted to do 89, I could plug it in. There's 89. If I wanted to do 114, all right, it tells me the predicted value once I'm in here. All right. And then we don't have to actually go through and plug it into the equation. There's nothing wrong with having to do it that way, but uh I just wanted you to see that you can actually look at your scatter plot and look at your regression line at the same time.